happy election day, Bill. How are you feeling? Pumped. After five weeks of campaigning, today's the day Australians finally cast their ballots. Polls point to a Labor win as Australians cast their votes today. Ready for change. There are things that Labor would rather forget about the 2019 election campaign. Perhaps first and foremost, the sense of certainty that they were going to win. But what they don't want to forget is the feeling that you can win. Two years on, and potentially just months from another election campaign, the Parliamentary Party is divided about its prospects. And here are a couple of pictures that show you why. In Queensland, the sea of blue outside Brisbane has come to represent Labor's alienation from a blue-collar base that has been transformed by a resources boom, the decline of manufacturing and unions, and the rise of the subcontractor. Anthony Albanese has better net satisfaction ratings than Bill Shorten did, but he suffers from a long shadow cast by the PM's approval ratings during the pandemic. The brutal reality is that the opposition has been deprived of oxygen by the pandemic. This year began with rumblings about Anthony Albanese's leadership. Six months on, it's not so much leadership rumblings as frustration and in some places, quiet panic. There is some musing about whether Labor would fare better under a leader who looks very different to the Prime Minister. But more significantly, the Parliamentary Party seems divided between those who think Labor can win and those who don't feel there's enough sense of urgency in the way Labor is prosecuting the political attack, that Albanese is leaving too much to the last moment. Anthony Albanese can argue he has done a considerable amount of housekeeping since becoming leader, including dealing with rebel union leaders. But cutting through with voters is what matters to his colleagues. When you lose three elections, if you go about doing the same thing, you should expect the same result. I very clearly have outlined, very transparently, publicly, that we would kick with the wind in the fourth quarter. We're in the fourth quarter, aren't we? Absolutely. And uh, where, where's the kicking with the wind? The kicking with the wind is in our policy for a national reconstruction fund for job creation, our policy that we've put out there for secure work, our policy for transforming childcare and women's economic opportunity, our policy in terms of housing. Albanese has been tied up this week in the day-to-day -day talking with colleagues and strategic manoeuvres of the parliament. But the bigger issue looming remains talking to the public. Do you think there's a mood for change in the electorate? I think there is. Uh, this is a government that will be having served almost a decade in office, shooting for longer in government than John Howard had, uh, with no legacy to show for it, no economic reform, no social reform, no plan for Australia's future. And people will ask, is this as good as it gets? Are they going to get better? But we have seen voters cling to the safety of incumbency like never before during this pandemic. Well, we have a Prime Minister who doesn't accept responsibility for things that he's responsible for. And we have a Prime Minister who waits until there's an absolute crisis before he acts, whether it's bushfires, whether it's the need for wage subsidies and protecting people's uh, livelihoods during the pandemic and protecting businesses, whether it be the rollout of the vaccine, setting up national quarantine centres. Labor will put forward a positive agenda for Australia's future at the next election, whilst pointing out some of the inadequacies of the current government. Well, Anthony Albanese says he's setting things up so that Labor will be kicking with the wind in the fourth quarter. Now, some of your colleagues are a bit concerned that we're in the fourth quarter. And uh, as uh, Paul Keating might say, you're not kicking any tries at the moment. Well, there's not enough policy out there, but um, I think uh, we're only just into the fourth quarter. And it, it would make no sense to deliver policy too early uh, in the game. So I don't see that as a problem. I think more than anything, this is about trust. Joel Fitzgibbon has become the go-to internal critic of Labor in its current manifestation. He has a long history as a disruptor for several leaders, but it would be a mistake to think he is a lone voice of concern about the party's election preparedness. Fitzgibbon is at the forefront of the internal brawl about energy and particularly coal policy, and these are issues which will be key to breaking up that huge swathe of blue across Queensland and Western Australia. But obviously Queensland uh, will be a major battleground, it always is. Labor needs to do better there. Uh, we need to do better in Western Australia as well. Why is it that Labor holds no seats north of Brisbane? Well, we, we haven't been good enough. We haven't presented uh, policies uh, that have uh, appealed to people in those electorates. The big 
pitch which we'll be making is about regional economic development. Matt Burnett uh, will be our candidate for Flynn at the next federal election. The Mayor of Gladstone will try to win the hotly contested central Queensland seat for Labor, one of a clutch of seats in the region that went the government's way last time with the help of One Nation preferences. Uh, when I was announced as the candidate for Flynn, we did it at uh, Berg Engineering, a local manufacturing firm. Uh, and at that point, Anthony reinforced the $15 billion reconstruction fund. Now, that will create more jobs in more industries, not just in Gladstone, but right across central Queensland. The LNP's Ken O'Dowd has held Flynn since 2010, but he's retiring at the next election. Well, there's certainly a mood for change in Flynn, and I, I feel that Anthony Albanese is cutting through. What is the Labor Party's policy on the future of Australia's coal industry? Well, one is that uh, in terms of uh, coal workers, uh, we support workers uh, and respect them, whatever work they do, whether they're coal miners, whether they be nurses. And the current government is undermining the wages and conditions of coal miners uh, by supporting contracting out, by supporting labour hire, by undermining those hard fought wages and conditions. But as I've said uh, to the coal miners national conference uh, in March, uh, there won't be a new coal fired power station built in Australia. We have to be honest about that. I support mining. I support those coal fired power stations. I support the railway workers, the port workers. Uh, we live in central Queensland. Blue collar workers are a massive part of our economy and they know I support them. What I'm saying is I support those current jobs and those current industries equally as much as I do support the new ones. So, Labor's candidate in Flynn says he supports coal-fired power stations and Anthony Albanese is saying no to any new ones. But there are other issues abroad in regional Australia. Last year, Labor's Christy McBain won a by-election in the southern New South Wales seat of Eden Monero. People are, you know, have been through a really tough time. Over a million hectares burnt in Eden Monero. There's been 28 declared natural disasters uh, in the electorate. Uh, and not one cent has been spent out of the $4 billion uh, recovery and resilience fund uh, announced by this government two years ago. So uh, for my electorate, they want to know where the proactive leadership is. Reactive decisions to quell disquiet amongst communities doesn't cut it. They want someone that's not going to blame the states. You said in your budget speech in reply that the pandemic created a once in a century opportunity to remake the country, but you didn't really go into the details of what that was. How transformative or radical will it be? Well, we need an economy that works for people, not the other way around. And we know that at the moment, too many Australians are trapped in insecure work. I think we're up against a very ordinary government, uh, and certainly not one which is unbeatable. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.